then the real question comes who will this really affect and what should you do hey everyone welcome to my channel today we are going to discuss about Devin so earlier I had a live chat session where we did some coding and half of the comments were actually about Devin so it seems that everywhere we go it's all about Devin nowadays so what exactly is happening and who will this affect the most? That is what we are going to have a look at in this video. Because right now, some of the big tech YouTubers who sell a lot of courses, they are even putting out videos explaining that this is nothing but just hype created by the company. And some of the other programmers, they are saying that this is truly the end of programmers and nothing is going to be the same again. Even the CEO of NVIDIA mentioned that we are absolutely going to change the way programming is done and it will be pretty much accessible to everyone. So keeping all of this in mind, what exactly is going to happen? Let's go ahead and discuss that. So if we go to cognitionlabs.com, there we are going to find the article that was written about Devin. So here you can see it was released on 12th March 2024. And the idea is that they are introducing this AI model as Devon, a personality, which is the first AI software engineer. And that's where all of the hype has been created. Now, whether it's good enough as an AI software engineer or not, that is a different story. But hats off to the marketing team who actually went on and created this because software engineers this you can say it hit them where it hurts so that is what they did and you can see the reason you you can see the reason here we have raised 21 million series a funding so they have a lot of money to spend and it seems that quite a bit has been spent on marketing but i'm not saying that it is bad we are going to look at whether it's good or bad but let's go ahead and look at the video i'm scott from cognition ai and today i'm really excited to introduce you to Devin, the first ai software engineer let me show you an example of Devin in action. I'm gonna ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple of different API providers. From now on, Devin is in the driver's seat. First, Devin makes a step-by-step -step plan of how to tackle the problem. After that, it builds the whole project using all the same tools that a human software engineer would use. Devin has its own command line, its own code editor, and even its own browser. In this case, Devin decides to use the browser to pull up API documentation so that it can read up and learn how to plug into each of these APIs. So as you can see here, it has uh, four things here. First of all, you can have interaction with it like a chatbot. Then it has its own terminal. It has a coding environment. And then it also has a browser where it can search. Now, the browser part is not very impressive because that is something Bing already does. It can go and scrap and learn about current things related to the web. And then we also have the chatbot. Again, it's not a big deal. We have that already. Then it can write up code. Again, it can write up code, which is pretty much similar to what ChatGPT can do and other uh, coding providers they can do. The terminal part, it might be a little bit different because now you can say a large language model is given some actions that it can perform. So basically what this does is it creates a loop. So if you find a problem, then instead of the person uh, mentioning that problem, it's, try it's trying to solve it by itself. So it keeps repeating and keep trying out before it comes to a solution. So it is pretty much using the same technologies at the backend, but it has a complete structure so that it can perform or outperform the current models. Now, this was the demo of our AI model, and you can see it is the software engineer that everyone is referring to. But the point here is that this is still a demo. We don't really have access to this to try it out for ourselves. And most of the times, demos are cherry picked. What does that mean? It means that they will pick the best results and they will show it to the world. And uh, the bad results, they will try to hide. So we are not sure if that is the case with this, but a lot of the times, this is what happens. So until we get hands on this, we cannot surely say whether it performs well or not. Now, the second thing is they have provided performance benchmarks. So they are saying that where ChatGPT can solve 1.74% of the coding problems, then Devon actually is able to solve 13.8%. So let's say it is able to solve 14%, then the rest of the 86%, it is still not able to solve. So it is impressive, but it's nowhere near 
to actually creating some real world applications that we could use in real world. Now, but does that mean that this is a bad progress? No, of course not. Jumping from 1.7 or even 4.8 to 13.86, that's a huge jump. So we are progressing quite fast towards better coding. But what does that mean? Does, does it really affect you? Now, to truly understand this, we can take the example of self-driving cars. Now, when self-driving cars were first introduced, they were promising that it will revolutionize how the industry will work and how cars will travel, they will communicate with each other, there will be no traffic lights and so on. The problem is we don't have self-driving cars even though we have a lot of progress over the years. And the reason is that last part where you give access to the AI to go ahead and do it. So the same thing comes to your AI models when it comes to programming. So similarly, if you have a code base running, you have a website running, you have a mobile application running, would you give access to an AI model to go ahead and make changes to the live website? So I would say it will be a very difficult task to do this. So none of the companies uh, as of now would do this. So it's not a good idea to trust this AI as of yet to give it complete control of the actual models or the actual website which people are using in the real world. Then the real question comes, who will this really affect and what should you do? Now, this is not nothing, right? A lot of YouTubers, they are saying that this is nothing to worry about. It will go away uh, just like everything else. Uh, there is a hype and then it just uh, goes away and there's no issues. No, that's not the case. Definitely, this will have an impact. You see, even when I used to program back in the days, I used to write code much slower than what I can do right now. Because a lot of the times what you do is you write the main code and then there's tons of things, the smaller tasks that can be done very easily, which are quite repetitive. Now what happens is that earlier when you need, for example, a team of five to create a website, now you might need only three people. And later on, you might just need two people. So that's the idea behind this. So it will hurt those people who are doing average tasks. If you are specialized in something, then you don't need to worry about it. So if you have specialized in a technology, then there will always be demand for that. And if you are above average in terms of skill set, then you don't need to worry about it. The biggest problem is for the freshers and the junior staff, which actually are worried because now their simple tasks that they used to learn from, now they can be replaced by other AI programs that can do it faster. So if you are a junior developer or you are a fresh graduate, then I would highly recommend that you focus on a single technology and try to become an expert in that instead of learning small, small tasks in many different programming languages and many different fields. So the area of expertise is what is required because the menial tasks can be done by AI models now and it could be replaceable. So right now we have seen a bump of, let's say around 9%, but later on, we might see a bump of 30% or 40%. So even though I sell programming courses, I am not saying that this is nothing. It is actually something and it will affect you if you don't take the measures right now. So the measures you need to take are basically to make sure to improve your skill set so that you are not replaceable. So that was my take on Devon and we will see how well it performs when we have some hands-on experience with it. So till then, we will just be optimistic. Maybe it will be good, maybe it won't be, but definitely it will make some difference. Uh, if you are thinking that there's nothing to worry about, there's always something to worry about. So I would say if you are a senior programmer, probably you don't have anything to worry about, but if you are on a junior level, then you might need to specialize further to make sure your job is secure. Right now, there might not be a drastic change, but in the future, it might actually hurt you. So make sure you keep learning and keep focusing on your career, and I will see you in the next one.